Hey guys, Rigid came out with a new 18 volt compact bandsaw that is fairly feature packed with a lot of things that most of us are looking for in this style of tool. We're going to go through those features. We're going to show you how it works, how it worked in cutting in our shop, and then we'll talk about the general overview afterwards to let you know what we think about it. Stay tuned. We have a piece of steel that is two and a half by two and a half, about three eighths inches thick. Let's give this a rip and see what happens. That was nice and we were cutting on its high speed of six. That cut might be on the largest side of what you're going to handle with this saw since you do have a two and a half inch width capacity, but you have a three inch cut depth here and if you are cutting with the saw down and it's a very, very narrow piece that you're cutting off, you actually have more depth than that as it'll slide right in between this area where you see this LED light. The LED light comes on with the trigger and you also have a variable speed adjustment that is somewhat hidden by this back battery here. If I pull the battery out, you can see here we go from six infinitely down to one. That is going to give you a blade speed of 320 to 680 surface feet per minute. The blade size on this is 32 and 7 eighths by one half inch by 0 0.020 inches. So a very common blade size I will put links to more of those in the description as this only comes with one 18 TPI blade. You do have an adjustable work stop, which is adjusted with this onboard Allen key. You can take these two Allen keys out. There's three basically bolt holes that they can go in so you can move the work piece or work stop forward or backwards. This also works for the blade adjustment if you want to move its adjustable travel. So you would move both these Allen keys forward or up or down to adjust where that travel is. You have a tool free blade change or tensioner, very simple. That removes the tension on this pulley, allows you to pull this blade out, put a new one in without issue. When you're ready to rock and roll, just put that guy down. Run the tool to make sure that your blade is on the upper end of these two pulleys. While we're looking inside here, we do have a lot of ball bearings that are helping this to run smoothly. If you're listening to that chunk, chunk, chunk noise as this is going through, that is the weld in the bandsaw blade. Some of them are better than others. You can see this is all an engineered plastic style case. There is no guards on this, which is nice, but this plastic is engineered to be rigid. And if we use our blade tensioner, we don't see any real flex. And that's what we're looking for. If you were to push in on this, there's nothing here that you can really move. And that is important because we've seen other styles of these where you could actually flex them with the blade tensioner and or pushing in with this. So this is engineered nicely. It's going to be easy to keep clean since there's no covers. Something that you're going to want to watch not to get any clothing inside of here. It, do, it does have a trigger lock. If you push that lock over, there's really no safety, which I like. It's a two-handed use saw, one on the end of a brushed motor and the other basically over the top of the saw. So you have a good line of sight while you're cutting. This will use any of Rigid's batteries, no need for an octane battery or anything like that because it is just a brushed motor. Let's go in and dive into some other cuts, maybe even get to use this rafter hanger that's included. Like we said when we were going through the saw, 
The width here is two and a half inches. Your depth is about three inches, but if you're only cutting off a narrow piece, you have more room to work. Let's kind of show you an example of that. Sorry about that noise, that was a very noisy example, but that is a four and a half inch piece and as you can see, it simply slides by. So you have about enough room for a solid inch of cutting depth before you really run into that three inch limitation. Thicker metal is gonna be no issue with this saw, you just need to let the saw and the blade do the work and not put a lot of pressure on. PVC, threaded rod, metal tubing, anything is going to be perfect for this. A lot of people are going to use it for EMT and different construction materials, but if you're a DIY guy with this rigid, you can actually cut a lot of things at home that you would for metal fabrication. Here's just an example of it cutting a metal tube. I could go on and on with different demonstrations and different materials that this saw really works well with. If you're a DIY guy at home, having a bandsaw like this is priceless because you can use it on so many different materials, so many different things that it's awesome. If you work in construction, you already know that this tool is a must have. And if you're in the Bridget brand or Bridget battery line, this is gonna be one of them that you're gonna pick up. Like I said, this doesn't need an octane battery or any specific battery, even a large five amp hour battery like I'm using. The power is going to be there to run this with just about any battery. It is a brushed motor, it's not brushless. That technology and cost is probably not needed in this. I know a lot of you guys have commented on our videos before. Why not give me the brushless? Why not give me everything that I want? Some of it is price, I'm sure, and some of it is it's just not needed in the electronics and everything else to put that together and make it work isn't worth the benefit that you would get. So I'm just happy with this tool that we have an infinitely adjustable dial here that we can adjust the blade speed up and down and it can be adjusted simply while you're using the tool. You know, a lot of bandsaws like this don't give you adjustments and that then puts you into a certain type of material that you can cut. This you could drop down, get a different blade with a different TPI or different blade type that might allow you to cut a little bit harder metal at a slower speed and it would really work well. That's what sort of sets this saw apart to me as far as features along with the adjustable blade tracking that are these two Allen heads back here. That blade tracking is important to me because if anything goes wrong and I need to adjust it, I have it. If I have one without it, then I have to start coming up with different imaginative ways of getting that blade to track right. Almost everybody's got a tool free blade change these days, but this one works like everything else. As far as the feel, this tool could be red to me and I would feel just about the same um, great feeling with it. And as far as the plastic or the engineered plastic that's up here, it doesn't flex. You don't feel it while you're cutting. You don't feel the flex while you're cutting. You don't feel anything happening other than that cut. And there is great feedback through the tool as to what's happening, including that weld that's on this blade. Every time that goes through, I can feel it. And some of the blades are better than others as far as how well they're welded together. This one is not welded together that great, but it still cuts great and allows me to feel everything that's happening. And I think that's super important when you're looking at a tool of this size and quality. 
The rafter hanger is going to be great for you guys who are in construction. If you're not in construction, it's not going to get in the way of anything. It's just simply there and allows you another place to hang the tool. It seems like the onboard Allen key is going to stay in place over time. We'll see on that. Either way, if it's not here, um, there's ways of making that just a hair tighter if you wanted to, but it seems like it's going to stay in there, no issue. All the rigid batteries are going to fit this, even the small ones. I think this tool rocks. I, I like the rigid grips that's here. I like the fact that we can use it on anything. I even like the fact that we're not really limited as far as our depth if we're not cutting off a large section. So we could roll up to something six, eight inches. And as long as we're cutting less than an inch off of it, it doesn't matter how deep of a cut we're making. It's the width that's going to stop us. Pretty cool tool. If you're in the market, I'll try to leave some uh, more information or more links in the description so you guys can check out anything else. As always, guys, we appreciate your time. Give us a like in this video. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Have a great day.